talk briefly about something near and dear to my heart, the city of Cincinnati, and particularly the streetcar. Uh, God, this is such a complicated issue. I have no idea where we're going with this. It's only more interesting in the news lately, spe specifically within the last few months, uh, because the streetcar is not doing very well. The, the streetcar program was uh, a product of the last Cincinnati City Council, not the most recent one, but the one prior to it. During the Obama administration, there was the, the oh, what was it, the, the giant stimulus, the one that tripled the deficit. It was like, you know, money's going to go to these shovel-ready product, projects, and at that point, it's like there's a huge tax incentive and there's free, the free money. Who in local government can resist the free money? So what they did was they proposed, they've been talking about a, uh, a trolley forever. And the, the, the impression I've gotten was that the trolley would look like an old-timey Cincinnati trolley. It would essentially be a sort of ride, like an attraction, not an actual useful piece of transportation because, because that's absurd. We'll get into that. It's really sold as, we'll never have this chance again. This is the cheapest it will ever be and all sorts of wonderful predictions about how much money we're going to make off of it and it'll attract people. This will be a world-class city again and we absolutely have to have it. The city council goes forward and starts to make this thing. The thing goes way over budget. So a number of people run for city council. This, obviously this was quite a while ago so we're playing catch up here. But uh, we have people running for city council specifically on the ticket of we're going to stop the streetcar from happening because it's just wasting a huge amount of money. And it's reasons way over budget for a number of reasons. You have to understand what Cincinnati is. Cincinnati, once upon a time, and once upon a time being the 1890s, was in fact a world-class city, right up there with New York, Chicago, uh, Berlin, and all the rest. It was a world-class city, it really was. This was the beer capital of the world. And by God, if you're the beer capital of the world, you will be a world-class city. The problem is, well, the problem, the city was had a huge number of German immigrants, uh, German and German-speaking, from German and German-speaking countries. And because of the incredible wealth that it generated, there was huge infrastructure projects. At one point, over the Rhine, which is a neighborhood just north of downtown, had a population density half again higher than modern uh, Manhattan Island. It, it was it was very very densely populated. For the technology, I mean, late nineteenth century, Jesus, early twentieth, incredible. And there were thousands of saloons, bars, taverns, but also all the po all of the wealth that the generated allowed. The arts to flourish, uh, pottery, glassworks, all, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of businesses that Cincinnati was known for over the course of the next century. What happened? Well, huge anti-German sentiment during World War I and World War II with massive anti-German propaganda in the United States. Immigrants from those countries were not as well received anymore. I mean, at one point, Cincinnati's population, perhaps as much as a third of them, flat out did not speak English. Uh, what else happened? Prohibition. If you're the beer capital of the world and the foundation of all of your wealth is beer, prohibition is going to kill your city. And it did. It, Cincinnati has never recovered. So Cincinnati suffered because of that because that's what the foundation of its economy was. All sorts of stuff happened. Fascinating. Go look it up. It's, it's really interesting. Anyway, since then, every city council has always been, we're going to put Cincinnati back on the map. And that's nonsense. That is obvious nonsense. No, you're not going to put it back on the map. You're just not. It's not a thing that's going to happen. It doesn't work that way, and you're not going to make it work that way. Not with, in this case, it was the trolley car. You're going to make a little choo-choo train, and that's going to make this a world-class city again. Really? So, they make the trolley, 
uh, a bunch of people get elected into office trying to stop the trolley. Our mayor literally ran on, on the ticket of, I'll stop the trolley. There's a problem, though. The city has accepted a huge amount of money from the government to build this goddamn trolley and other projects. For example, knocking my house down. R really, that's why my house is now a level patch of earth two neighborhoods over. What happened was the city had spent all of that money and now that they're not building the trolley then they have to give the money back which they didn't have. So one way to get out of paying that is just to build the goddamn trolley. So here comes more money getting thrown into this giant fire pit. The, the trolley gets built it's way over budget, it's way behind schedule, and all of the incredibly rosy predictions about how many people would ride it, how much it would raise, uh, how much it would improve the neighborhoods, that's the one that always fucking kills me. It's, it's the, if you build it, they will come. If people have a little tiny choo-choo train running up this street, this street's businesses are just gonna prop up, they're gonna grow like weeds, they're gonna be super profitable, and it's going to generate enough revenue for the city to totally justify the choo-choo train. Obviously not. God. Going through this, okay, why is this so damn expensive? Like I said, Cincinnati is an old city with massive infrastructure for its size, but old infrastructure. When Prohibition happened, the city almost froze. There are neighborhoods that just haven't changed since, like, the 30s. And... Well, I mean, to be honest, uh, there was a little downhill slope. So let's say the 50s. Still, half a century more than. What ha that means is that the city has these ancient gas lines running under the streets. And, uh, interesting side, uh, those gas lines run on a... I'm probably going to fuck this up, but it runs on a negative cathonic charge. And I'm probably wrong, but I believe the way that works is it has a slight negative charge, which if there's a positive charge, I guess, it negates it. It, it somehow keeps it from getting electrified and thus blowing up the entire street. And that works fine. It protect, you know, protects the gas line unless you run an electrical rail through the street and then it doesn't work anymore. So most of the money for the, the trolley... I'm going to keep calling it the trolley for a while, although that's not true. Most of the money for the trolley was re was moving gas lines. That's all it was. Um, nearby city, I mean, right across the river, there are a number of cities within the greater Cincinnati area. Quite a few, actually, if you're not from around here. Newport, Covington, right across the river. Ludlow, I mean, they're they're all technically in another state, Kentucky, but they're they're just right across a couple bridges. They're still part of the same metropolitan area, but they have different rules and stuff. If you want booze, you cross the river, for example. Funnily enough, this used to be the, you know, it's not, okay. Anyway, um, and, and also that's true north. Cincinnati, the greater Cincinnati is largely the area within the 275 loop, but very little of that area is Cincinnati proper. There are a lot of little cities like Silverton, Norwood, and so on and the rest, all within that 275 loop, very close by, that just have never been incorporated. So, so after this clusterfuck, they build the stupid trolley way over budget. This thing is, is costing money, and none of the rosy predictions about how it's going to raise money are ever coming to pass. The nothing is, is panning out. Uh, in addition to that, there are huge mechanical problems, the thing never runs right, it's a train. I mean, it's recently, the reason, the impetus for this little video here was that just recently an article was posted about how uh, transportation development is saying that the streetcar budget is going to have a shortfall. It's, it's going to cost, it's going to have cost overruns, just in its normal operation. To which I replied, without before I read the article, read the article, but before I read it, looked at the title and went, well, duh, it's, it's this innovative transportation mechanism from the 19th fucking century. 
Of course it's not going to run. We got rid of trolleys. We had trolleys in this city, and we got rid of them in the 70s. This has not been... This is a sy system of transportation that has been obsolete for longer than I have been alive. And by God, kiddies, my balls dropped during the Ford administration. It's like... Motherfucker, of course it's not going to make any money. Who in the hell is going to ride a choo-choo train, an electric choo-choo train, that doesn't even run very well, that doesn't run on time, they can't keep ten minutes between the things like they were supposed to, everything is costing more, I think the the little company they have running the actual management, actually operating the thing, is running on a $3.3 million budget and it's costing them way more every year to do it. So they make up for it by just not doing a very good job. Uh, the mayor is someone who got elected to shut it down. So how enthusiastic is he about fixing the thing? Well, not very. So everyone's just, it's someone else's problem. Um, honestly, they should just get rid of the trolley. I, when I heard about the trolley, and incidentally, I keep mentioning this, the trolley was never built. Never ever. It's a light rail now. It, it was sold as sort of this historical looking, because Cincinnati had a historical trolley, because like I said, once upon a time, in trolley era, Cincinnati was a wealthy city at that point, with money to spend and people happy to get neat innovations. Uh, the trolley car they got rid of because it's a primitive form of technology. The city can't afford it. Cars work better. And fuck, buses work better. Much better, in fact. There is nothing that this light rail can do that a bus line couldn't, and couldn't do better at literally a tenth the cost. Easily a tenth the cost. So it's it's utterly pointless. It goes nowhere. It doesn't reach all the way t to anything interesting downtown. It goes past Finley Market, this ancient open-air market that's kind of north of over the Rhine. It's It's not anywhere near a bunch of stuff. It's very inconvenient. I suggested as a joke when we heard this was going on, because obviously it took forever to build, that instead of uh, a trolley, they should build a roller coaster over Cincinnati. And then I, you know, as a joke, but then I started going through the intellectual exercise of what would that mean? How would that be different? Well, no one else has a roller coaster in their downtown area, so it would be unique if nothing else. The roller coaster over Cincinnati would actually go over Cincinnati. It would have to be on big pylons like a roller coaster, which is to say it wouldn't interfere with normal traffic, unlike the trolley, which has the capability of not only smashing into cars, something it's done quite a bit, but also utterly gridlocking traffic wherever it goes, because if it gets stuck, it, it, it's on rails. It, it can't reroute. It can't take a detour. It's on rails. It can't fucking go anywhere. Uh... So the roller coaster idea, once again, it will be less expensive because uh, you don't have to, you're, once again, you're not pulling up gas lines to build it. So even if it costs the same as the damn light rail, it'd be cheaper because you don't have to do as much infrastructure work. Um, you'd have, it would have a nicer view. I'd go on a roller coaster that goes over over the Rhine. At one point, that was the most dangerous neighborhood in, in the United States. I hear a serial killer was just fucking up the average, though. That's the only reason why. Yeah. But, yeah, so roller coaster would, a roller coaster would have been, fit, and it's, it's not like the, the light rail goes anywhere anyone wants to go. From what I understand, the only thing it really tracks efficiently as it goes past all of the bars. So if you're... you can do a pub crawl on the trolley. Not a very efficient one, but you can do it. Better than walking, I guess, although downtown Cincinnati isn't that freaking large. I think it was Covington. Covington or Newport, one of the Kentucky cities, which seemed to get this shit right more often than Cincinnati, had this idea to just take a bus and make a mock trolley. It's really a bus, but all the in the on the outside and on the inside, where the riders are, it looks just like a trolley, like an old timey turn of the century, turn of the nineteenth, twentieth century trolley. It looks like a trolley car, but it's really a bus. It has all the functionality and practicality of a bus. It's just 
decorated really well. It's like a cosplaying bus. It looks great. If it doesn't work out, you just scrap it or sell it. You can. It's a nice bus. It's just a nice bus, so it wasn't that expensive. You don't have to build new infrastructure for it. It's just a bus. It's just a bus. Brilliant idea. Worth mentioning, the term light rail does not mean that the vehicle itself is light. That's what I thought. That's what a lot of people think. Oh, it's a lightweight vehicle. No. The term light rail in light rail, the light in light rail, as it were, just means that it has a very low passenger capacity. That's it. That's what that means. That means it's equivalent to like three or four buses. That's all. And it has a very limited route. It can't reroute because it's on fucking rails. It's just a miserable, stupid idea. And it will never go away. It is over budget. Uh, no one wants to ride the thing because it doesn't go any damn where. Um, of course, businesses didn't magically spring up along its route. Why on earth would they? I only bring that part up because I had friends who, who vehemently argued how great this, this light rail thing was going to be. You know, oh, we're going to have the trolley and it'll be amazing and all these businesses will, will crop up out of nowhere. And the problem is it doesn't work that way. It only works that way when you have a, a bottleneck, when it's like eh, people are forced to go through this route or greatly, greatly encouraged to do so, then businesses will crop up simply because there's more opportunity, more traffic, more eyes on your advertising, more feet in your store. That's great. This is a fucking trolley car. Pardon me. It, it really is a light rail. It's a little... It's like the thing in a large airport that takes you from one terminal to another. That's all it is. It's not like you can get in or off or on this thing easily or quickly. So there's no parking. It's a tr I mean, unless you're... It doesn't make any sense. It's because if you're along this route... Uh, what? You can't get off the thing and then jump right back on. You have to pay each time you get off or on the thing. Oh, and by the by, the ticket system and all that hasn't worked very well either. The goddamn tickets don't work. It's uh, The little payment kiosks, which were frightfully expensive, don't fucking work. It, it, it's such a huge boondoggle. And I wanted to rant about it a little bit because I like this city a lot. I actually do love the city I live in. It's a very quirky, weird city. It's simultaneously a very old and very new city. And it just does, it does some cool stuff. But when I say I love my city, I mean the greater Cincinnati area, because downtown Cincinnati is garbage. It, there's not a lot to do aside from ride their choo-choo train. Anyway, I had to get this out of my system. I've actually really enjoyed making videos lately. And I think with this one, if I can get this one out before the end of the week, I will actually have caught up to my goal of having one video for each week of this year. That was kind of my goal. I was way behind, and then I started doing like two or three a week, and lo and behold, I think with this video and the previous one, if they both can publish both of them before Saturday, I'm caught up. Awesome me. That was my goal, and that's me.